everybody, this is Crystal. Welcome back to more Natural Every Day. So the first official day of summer was just over a week ago. Um, and 4th of July is just days away. So today I want to talk about sun protection. So this is actually going to be the unintentional second installment of um, the series, The Real Cost of Beauty. So we think about sun protection, we think about our skin, not necessarily thinking about that being about beauty, but it really is. What is more important to your beauty than your skin? All right, so um, I know it's tempting for us to soak up all the sun that we can in the name of vitamin D um, and beautifully bronzed skin, but we really have to be careful about how much sun we get and how we actually get that sun. So one thing that I always try to seek in my life is balance. And that means um, that in most cases, I'm not going to recommend that you go extreme in any one direction or the other. And sun exposure is no different. I'm not gonna tell you to hide indoors. Um, I'm also never gonna tell you to just spend your entire life outside. Like that's not something you're gonna hear from me. Um, now, we all know that um, the sun, sun lamps, and tanning boots all give off ultraviolet or UV radiation, and exposure to UVA ra UV radiation um, causes early aging of the skin and also um, can cause skin damage that can lead to skin cancer. However, moderate sun exposure may have um, health benefits for you like stronger bones, better sleep, improved mood, definitely for me, um, and a healthier immune system. So in fact, like non-burning sun exposure is associated with a reduced risk of melanoma, while sun burns are associated with doubling the risk of melanoma. So it's good to get some sun. What's not good and when it becomes a problem is when you get into the place where you're not protecting your sun, you're overexposed, you're getting burned, and that's where you can start to see the skin damage um, and your cancer risk goes up. Okay, so um, while we're talking about um, the cancer risk, I do want to take a moment as a black woman to dispel the myth that if you have a dark complexion or darker complexion, you can't get cancer. You can't get skin cancer. Anyone can get skin cancer, um, regardless of race. Um, and according to, I think it was a July 2016 study in the Journal of American, Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, um, melanoma is actually more deadly in people of color. So darker skin um, does produce more um, melanin, couldn't think of the word for a second, which uh, is the pigment in skin. And it does help protect the skin, but only to a certain extent. So people of color can still get sunburned, I have, um, and can still develop skin cancer from UV damage. So we do have to be careful um, even those of us who might have more melanin in our skin. So I really wanted to dispel that. I know it's something I hear from people I'm around all the time, and it's just not true because you can still have to protect yourself. So how do we enjoy the sun, which I do enjoy often, um, without increasing our risk for cancer? So I'm going to give you some tips on how to protect your skin from sunlight. You can um, wear a hat with a wide brim, and I mean all the way around, wide brim, um, that shades your face, your neck, and your ears. Um, and I say a wide brim hat all the way around because baseball caps, um, they, and like sun visors, they really only protect parts of your face, like parts of your skin. So you still have some very exposed and very sensitive and easy to burn parts. Um, that are exposed. You should wear sunglasses and make sure you're not just looking for fashion sunglasses. Make sure you are looking to make sure that even if they are fashion glasses that you are looking for something that has uh, that little sticker on it or sometimes it's a tag that says it blocks UV radiation. Um, if it doesn't have that then odds are it actually doesn't. So you want to get the ones that have the marking on it that say they block UV radiation 
and that is going to protect the skin around your eyes. And this is some of the most sensitive skin on your face or your body, really. So you want to protect that. Um, you can wear long sleeves and long pants, which sounds crazy because it's hot. Um, but if you're, I remember my dad always when we were on the road in the summer, he would always wear a long shirt because he was, and um, he had that one arm like in the window all the time and the sun was still coming through the windshield. So he always wore long sleeves and uh, usually a cap while he was driving to protect himself from getting um, too much sun on his skin. And he's darker than me naturally. So um, yes, the melanin thing, you do still need to protect yourself. Um, and then the tight, tighter woven the fabric, the better. So you're really thinking it's a literal physical barrier between you and um, the sun. So the tighter the fabric, the better. Um, and then there's actually some clothing that are some fabrics that actually have an ultraviolet protection factor. Um, and the higher the rating, the greater the protection from sunlight. I'm not saying you have to go that far. I'm just letting you know if you have to be outside for really like super extended periods of time, um, especially if you have to be outside during the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, because that is when the sun's rays are actually the strongest. So you need to be especially vigilant during those times. Um, and I know I've experienced that myself. If I can't get out to like water the garden or be out in the garden before 10 a.m., I usually don't get out there until after four because it's just, if you go out, if I go out between 10 and four, it's almost unbearable. I feel like I'm cooking. Um, so, um, Remember also that the sun's rays can go through light clothing. So like what I have on right now can go through my clothes. It can go through windshields, your windows, um, and the clouds. So just because it's a little cloudy doesn't mean that you don't need to protect your skin from UV rays. It can, the, the sun's rays can come through clouds. Um, and then, oh, also... Um, the sun's rays are also reflected by sand, water, snow, ice, and pavement. So if you're um, skiing, if you're out on the beach, um, if you're ice skating outside, or if you're just outside even playing basketball, you have to remember you're getting it from both ends at that point because it's the sun's rays are hitting you and then they're also bouncing off the pavement uh, back up to you. So you need really do need to be protected. So now... What should we do if you aren't going to follow all of that stuff? Because let's be honest, I know you're not going to because I don't always do it. So in that case, you're going to need to wear sunscreen products with an, a sun protection factor, or SPF is what you're used to seeing it as, of at least 15. Um, some doctors recommend using a higher a product with um, at least 30, an SPF of 30, which is fine. Um, but I just don't want you to get into the mindset that if you um, get a higher, the higher the SPF, the better the sunblock. That is not the case at all. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sunscreens um, since that is going to be kind of like most likely what you're going to do of all the tips that I'm giving. So <laughs> um, here's the thing before we I go into my spiel. Um, not all screens are created equally. So I need you to get your pencil out real quick or take a screenshot um, of a couple things or look down in the comments because, you know, I'll put everything that I need you to remember down in the comments. But uh, according to the EWG's 2018 report, and the EWG, again, if you've seen my other videos, you know that's the Environmental Working Group. Um, but according to their 2018 sunscreen report, um, two-thirds of the 650 beach and sport sunscreens that they investigated don't work. That is roughly 67% of the products that they tested don't work. And by don't work, I mean they um, provide inadequate sun protection and or contain harmful ingredients. So per that report, um, there have been major improvements over the last 10 years or so, but the majority of sunscreens available for purchase in the United States still contain damaging chemicals or fail to offer enough protection against ultraviolet rays. 
and about half of the beach and sports sunscreens sold in the U.S. Um, that the EWG analyzed would not be allowed on the market in Europe due to inadequate um, protection against UVA rays. So, um, don't lose heart. It's 67% roughly that don't work. So there's a good 33% of sun protection products out there that actually do still work. And we're going to talk about those. Just remember that there is no perfect sunscreen. Um, many of them contain harmful chemicals and even some of the mineral based ones will have nanoparticles, um, which are like minute ingredients um, that create they're supposed to create this like layer of protection between your skin and the rays, but they can cross the blood brain barrier and they can also be harmful to aquatic life, depending on what, the, what particles are being used. Um, and then if you really think about like with the harmful ingredients and things like that, we talked about um, in the last video in this series, which was skincare products that we talked about. Um, think about your skin as your largest organ. So, you don't have um, another product like sunscreen that you're actually applying in thick coats on your skin multiple times a day. Like you don't get that kind of long lasting skin absorbing exposure to any other products like soap or shampoo that you rinse right off or even a moisturizer that you might put on once or twice a day. So it's really important to um, reduce your toxic exposure when it comes to your sunscreen because you're going to be super exposed to whatever is in it. Um, so it's really important to look for safer sunscreens uh, if you're going to use them, which I do recommend, um, and recognize that you can't rely on the sunscreen alone. I still do want you to try some of those other um, options for skin protection. So um, I'm going to read, actually read directly to you a couple of excerpts from the EWG. 2018 report that I found interesting. Um, it says active ingredients in sunscreen come in two forms, mineral and chemical filters. Each uses a different mechanism for protecting the skin and maintaining stability in sunlight. The most common sunscreens on the market contain chemical filters. These products typically include a combination of two to six of the following active ingredients. Oxybenzone, avobenzone, octosalate, octocrylene, homosalate, and octinoxate. Mineral sunscreens use zinc oxide and or titanium ox dioxide. Laboratory studies indicate that some chemical UV filters may mimic hormones and physicians report sunscreen related skin allergies, which raises important questions about unintended human health consequences from frequent sunscreen application. Again, using sunscreen is not bad. It's the sunscreen that you're using that you have to be careful about. Also says the Food and Drug Administration has not reviewed evidence of potential hazards of sunscreen filters. Instead, it grandfathered in ingredients used in the late 1970s when it began to consider sunscreen safety. EWG has reviewed the existing data about human exposure and toxicity for the nine most commonly used sunscreen chemicals. The most worrisome is oxybenzone, which was added to nearly 65% of the non-mineral sunscreens in EWG's 2018 sunscreen database. It is an allergen and a hormone disruptor that soaks through the skin and is measured in, nearly, in the body of nearly every American. So, it is definitely going into your bloodstream. Um, now, EWG recommends that um, consumers avoid sunscreens with oxybenzone for the reasons that I just read to you. Um, but there are other sunscreen chemicals that also penetrate the skin and can cause hormone disruption. So, the ones I would caution against uh, are the other ones that I read earlier. So, the oxybenzone, ox mm, octinoxate, homosalate, octit, octisalate, and octocrylene. <laughs> so, um, and then if you're looking at something that has titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, avobenzone, and mexoril SX, um, those all have a score with EWG of two, um, which means that they are lower 
they have a lower toxicity and any generally anything with a rating that low with these WG is considered safe to use unless you're allergic to it. Always my caution. Um, and then there's one other ingredient in sunscreen that could be a common a concern and it's a common additive. It's um, actually a form of vitamin A called retinyl palmitate. Um, and there are studies by federal government scientists that indicate that it might trigger development of skin tumors and lesions, which used um, would use on the skin in the presence of sunlight. Did you catch that? Yeah. Um, other governments warn that cosmetics may contribute to unsafe amounts of vitamin A and recommend that using vitamin A laden cosmetics on the lips and over large portions of the body, like lip um, chapstick with SPF and sunscreen, um, that you would want to avoid that. So too much preformed vitamin A, including retinol, retinol palmitate, retinol acetate, retinoic acid, um, and retinol linolate can cause a variety of health problems. And you'll see those in a lot of skincare products. Um, and they can actually cause problems like liver damage, brittle nails, hair loss, osteoporosis, and hip fractures in older adults. So um, th obviously that's one camp. There's another camp that says that the risk of vitamin A overexposure from cosmetics is low. But personally, um, I don't want to take that risk. So I'd rather bank on those cautioning being correct than banking on those who say it's okay. I don't want to risk it. Um, and then for inactive ingredients, you need to look out for, okay, bear with me. I'm going to read it and I'm going to try to get it right. Methyl lysothiazolinone. I don't know if I said that right, but um, it should have been on the screen. And I'll also, if not, I'll make sure it's down in the comments. That's a really long word. I don't know that I even caught every letter. But anyway, uh, laboratory studies indicate that that word, uh, <laughs> that additive is, um, it's a preservative and it's a skin sensitizer and an allergen. So especially like I already have, um, I have always had sensitive skin and I know a lot of people do. And when you're out in the sun, I know partic like my skin gets more sensitive. So um, you want to avoid that because it's just going to, exacerbate that problem. So that is it for my little spiel on sun protection. Um, there are a bunch, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sunscreen products that got good scores from EWG. So don't lose hope. There is a sunscreen out there for you. Um, and I will, um, I'm only going to link, list and link the top recommendations from the EWG EWG for sunscreen products in 2018 in the comments. So I'm going to put them in the comments. I'm going to um, try to get a link to every one of those products so it's easy to find for you. So if you can take a look um, and look at like each one and see if you want to try and get it. Um, and then I'm also going to put a link to the EWG's full report in the comments if you want to um, read the whole thing. And or if you want to use it to search for your favorite sunscreen product and see how it rates. Um, and you can also see the entire list of sunscreens and their ratings that they reviewed this year. Um, so, and please remember, in order for even the best sunscreen to be effective, you have to follow the manufacturer's instructions. So generally speaking, again, read the directions, but generally speaking, that's going to mean you want to apply sunscreen um, at least 30 minutes before sun exposure and reapplying every two hours or immediately after coming out of the water or a lot of sweating. Okay. All right, guys. That is it for me today. Um, if you learned something in this video or found it helpful, make sure to give it the thumbs up so that other people can find it. That really helps um, people be able to find the videos. And then if you can let me know in the comments, if you try any of the products um, listed below 
or if you check the uh, rating for your skin, your favorite sunscreen or your old sunscreen, if you like to um, check the rating for that, I'd love to hear how it rated on EWG's site. Um, and then, as always, I would love to stay connected with you, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. All right, until next time, live a more like natural life today than you did yesterday. Bye, guys.